The location shooting over water, very unusual. It's a national public holiday here, and the crowd is absolutely packed out. Here come the athletes. Number one, representing Indonesia. USA shoots first. Indonesia shoots second. Well, here we go. Presentation of the athletes uh, to that pack crowd. There they are. The umbrellas are out, not because of the rain, but because of the super hot sunshine. As you saw. The referee called for USA to shoot first. They'll fire their arrows ahead of the Indonesians. So a good start, crucial here in this sport. And we get off with a nine. Ryan, at these, in these early stages, just explain how this setup works, how the scoring works. It's quite interesting that Indonesia actually chose to shoot second this time. Yep. And maybe they're hoping to get some information about where the arrows are going and get their bearings. So each of the archers from the US have shot their first arrow. I'll now switch over to Indonesia. Looking good. <laughs> Tell you what, I mean, I don't know if they got any information out of it, but they've really opened up strong. Yeah, and uh, a lot of support from the crowd here for Indonesia. <laughs> now the clock ticking down, so they've only got a certain amount of time to fire their arrows. Two per athlete per set. A cumulative score builds up within the set but the idea is to get your set points. Correct, so in the mixed team events, they're gonna try and win the best of four sets, and if they draw, then we'll go to a shoot off. It's a good shooting there, 37 out of a possible 40 for the USA. On the line between the eight and the nine, and in archery, the archer gets uh, generosity and gets the higher score. And that will do it. 38 plays 37 in the first set, and Indonesia get the two points for winning the set. Yeah. Tell you what, an early lead can be very beneficial for any team, but competing against such an experienced team like the USA archers, it it may or may not make any difference. <laughs> yeah, but big surprise for the USA going out in the semi-finals. So they're looking uh, to, to get a medal here in Shanghai. Yeah, they were really surprised by how well Turkey shot in the semi-final. Be interesting to see if they can do that here. That was a lovely first arrow. So, so close to the center. Yeah, and uh, Choi. Lisa there, the female athlete for Indonesia in their mixed team. She's carrying the flag of her nation on her arrow bag, and I, I think I saw a cuddly toy. Indonesia shoots second. Range clear.
So the trailing team go first here. Second set of the bronze medal match in this newest of formats of archery. You can see just like before, they got one left, one right, and they'll probably find the center on the next two shots. So Indonesia up to fire again. Maybe they will have seen something and read something in the weather and the wind. Yeah. Another yeah. 10. Interesting fact is that this gentleman here actually beat Kim Woo Jin at the Olympics to knock him out of medal contention. The biggest day of his yeah. archery career. And will that have a question mark against it? I thought it would, but it appears that the Falcon Eye is pretty definite that that one was a nine. Another nine drifting over to the right. Crucial here. Katuna Lorig. Oh, she's pulled that one way left and only scores a seven here. The door has opened wide for Indonesia. This is a great chance. If they can capitalize on these two shots, then they'll have a 4-0 lead and that's a very good opportunity for them to actually win this match. Well, it's a nine and it's probably her worst arrow so far. She's been shooting really well. Anything inside the red to win the set. Well, that'll do it. You called it. He and got. It doesn't matter. That's what he needed, and it doesn't matter. It wasn't the best shot. You could see he was amused by where it went, and but it's all okay. Well, disappointment for the USA in the semi-finals, and now they're trading the world number five. Here we have the groupings. So you can see the the variation that both teams have got. They're relatively similar. One a bit left, one a bit right. Wind. Well, it's, it's not a super strong wind, but it is blustery. It's blowing about all over the place. A wind like this, it's more likely to actually affect the archer more than the arrow. So your ability to hold that bow nice and steady is very important. Only a millimeter, and it could be way out in the red. <laughs> Shooting across 70 meters here as we look at the Indonesians to a target which is across a little lake. Quite unusual, right? It is. I mean, during the ranking round, we just shoot on a nice flat field over the grass and everything's pretty normal. As you can see, there's even a car there that they might hit. Well, the lead umpire is ready. USA still trailing. Indonesia in a commanding position, and this one could be over very quickly. So if Indonesia can tie this set, it's over in three sets. USA, USA needs the win. Brady Ellison up for the USA. Crucial set for them here in the bronze medal match in Shanghai. That could cost them unless they can come back nice and strong. He looks a little confused about where it went as well. The Olympic rings on the arm. A good shot there from Katuna Lorig competing for her third nation here. Exactly. So she's competed at five Olympics for three different countries going all the way back to 92. Well, I have to say that's probably enough, but up and to the left as Ryu Ega Agata fires for Indonesia. Quite 
And you can see there all the arrow holes are a little bit high left and they're making adjustments right now and they could have this match at this rate. Well, you can see the frustration there. Brady Ellison hands over to Katuna Lorig. Drop that one out to the right into the eight. Breathing space for Indonesia. This could all be over in the next two arrows. They only need 17 points. So seven to win. They've shot more consistently. They've got the job done. One more arrow to go. They need a seven to win and draw the scores. They shoot off with a nine. Indonesia have dominated this bronze medal match right from the start over USA. They didn't recover the Americans from the shock loss to Turkey in the semi-finals. And Indonesia have capitalized. Brian, uh, the Indonesians were consistent, they did the job, mostly tens and nines, a little late in the second set, but uh, you've got to feel for the Americans, they just didn't recover from that semi-final loss. You do really have to feel for them, but the other part is, it may be a surprise given that Indonesia is a lesser known team, but at this event they ranked fourth and USA ranked 11th, so it's not that big of a surprise when you look at it. Yeah, so you look at the overall performance here, because the world rankings are one thing, but all these teams have to go through qualification, uh, and uh, the USA, as you say, Ryan, just didn't perform here at all. We've got the groupings for Indonesia. You can see they only missed the yellow once, and consistently high left, but it was a good group. Uh, we look down, 70 metres from uh, the, sh the shooting line down to the target. They're just replacing the target for the next match. And here we see some great shots. Yeah, you can really see that from the start and all the way through the match, they were the more consistent and stronger team in this match. Superb shooting, superb grouping, and absolutely totally consistent high fives